Welcome to the last uh, module of Point Set Topology course, part one. So we shall continue the study of topological vector space. Several important basic results we have derived already. So in the, this last module, I will prove three important results about topological vector spaces. The first one is <clears throat> every finite dimensional vector subspace Y of V is linearly homeomorphic to K power N. Further, if V is Hausdorff, which is the same thing as just assuming T naughtness, then Y is a closed subspace of V also. Okay. Every finite dimensional vector subspace is linearly homeomorphic, it's linear isomorphism to KN. Without, uh, without the uh, assumption of Hausdorffness, it need not be the closest of space because you can always take indiscrete topology on any topological vector space. Then the only closed subspace will be empty set of the whole space. Okay, so that's very easy to see that the condition is necessary here. Okay, so here is the proof. Start with a basis for y. Say u and u to n. Then the map f of ei going to ui extends linearly to an isomorphism from kn to y. Right? So linear part is done. Already we have seen that in the last uh, uh, corollary of the previous module that any linear map is continuous. So f is continuous. The only thing that is missing is f inverse should be also continuous from y to kn. Okay, so this is what we have to show. Now you take s to be the unit sphere in kn. Okay, I am taking kn. It's a Euclidean topology I can take. So I'll talk about unit sphere there. There's no problem. Then we know that s is compact. Under continuous image, compact subset could compact subset. So Fs is compact. Now F is injective. So F0 goes to 0. So non-zero vectors won't go to 0. That means 0 is not in F of S. Okay. Now B be a balanced neighborhood of 0, which does not intersect Fs. See, Fs is a uh, compact subset. Okay, so I can choose. Zero is not there. So you can choose some neighborhood here, which is disjoint from that. Is it's a regularity or whatever. But I want to choose it as a balanced neighborhood. All right. Any two, one compact subset and a closed subset can be separated. That's what we have already seen. So for that, you don't need... So, see, slowly I am using all the results we have proved in the past two lectures for topological vector spaces. So, choose a B, a balanced neighborhood zero, which does not intersect Fs. All right? Put A equal to F inverse of B. Okay, which is same thing as F inverse of B intersection Y because the image of F is the whole of Y. It's contained inside Y. That's why it is a inverse of B intersection Y. All right. A is a neighborhood of 0 because F is continuous. Since F inverse is linear also, 
linearity there is no problem what we are trying to prove is continuity of happiness it follows that this a is a balanced set of okay some some scalar multiple times something is contained inside etc you have to check so from the balanced neighborhood of b it follows that a is also balanced so scalar multiplication comes here because f is a bijection okay alpha times some vector is alpha times f of some vector so that's all i have to use to show that b is balanced it implies a is balanced in particular if z is a point inside a then the entire line segment zero z will be inside a this is the property of balance set we have seen all the time okay so this implies that a is star shaped at zero all the line segments are there therefore in particular a is connected okay now a intersection s is empty because i have started with b intersection f of s is empty okay so we know that the unit ball inside kn okay whether it is k equal to r r k equal to r or z unit ball always separates the whole whole uh, k power n okay namely those things which are strictly inside and those things strictly outside so there are two disjoint open subset right so since a intersection s is empty and a is connected it follows that a must be contained in the open unit disk in k n with center zero right now given any epsilon positive it follows that if you take f inverse of epsilon b that will be epsilon times f inverse of b by linearity of f inverse okay but this epsilon b so epsilon times f inverse of b is f inverse of b is a that's epsilon a so this epsilon a will be contained inside epsilon d because a is contained inside this unit bar d okay i can write this as d power n but that's not correct because i don't know whether k is r or c so it depends upon it's maybe d 2n or dn so i have just written as d unit is clear this implies that now we see f inverse of epsilon d is continuous epsilon d f inverse is continuous at zero okay so zero is an element of y so y 2 k power n we have shown that this linear map is continuous but y is a linear space y is also a topological vector space continuity at zero is enough is enough to show that f inverse is continuous everywhere okay see how connectivity finally has been used to show that the inverse is continuous all right so this is one one important theorem well i have to show as the Other part, namely, suppose v is house dog, then I want to show that y equal to y bar, namely y is closed also. So y it is closed. That's what you have to show. Given p belongs to y bar, by continuity of scalar multiplication, it shows that there exists a t positive such so that p is inside t times b. Okay. All right. See the whole of y actually there are various ways of seeing this. The y bar is contained inside the whole of V. The whole of V take any point that this one. The larger uh, the the bigger and bigger multiples of B will cover the whole of it. So some t times B will be will contain B P or every P. Therefore P will be inside. y bar intersection tb p is already inside y bar and p equal to tb so it is inside this one you can take a closure okay 
So that closure is contained inside f of t a bar, right? Because a is nothing but f inverse of b. Okay, so if we apply f, f of f itself, y is what, what y, y itself is f of the whole thing, right? So the whole thing is in the image f of this. So this is kind of f of t a bar. So y is nothing but f of k n. After all, everything is there. So there is no need to write y at all. If it is a v, there was a problem. So the whole thing is inside the image. So this contains f of t a bar now. Okay. So but this f of t a bar is contained inside. You can write t a bar here and then could take the closure. F of T A bar and then take the closure. But T A bar is compact. Okay? Compact subset of K n, right? See, A is a bounded subset already inside, contained inside the unit is. Its closure is compact. Okay, so it's compact subset of K n. F of T A bar. See, once A bar is compact, T times A bar is also compact because T is. Anyway, some scalar. So f of t a bar will be a closed subset of v because it's compact and v is Hausdorff. So this is where we are using first time that v is Hausdorff. That closed subset, uh, compact subsets are closed. That's what you have to use. Okay. So therefore, p which is inside f of t a bar, there is no need to take the closure here. So P is inside F of T A bar, but F of T A bar is after all inside Y because F of whole K N is Y. Okay. So P is inside Y, that's what we have to So Y bar is contained inside Y, therefore Y bar is equal to Y. All right. So closure property follows by again. I never theorem that closed subsets of KNs are compact. So all very important things have been used here. All right. So let's go to the next result. For which I'll make a temporary definition of local compactness. Later on in part two, we will study local compactness on its own for arbitrary topological spaces. Here is a tentative definition for a topological vector space V. It's locally compact if there exists a neighborhood O of zero such that the closure of O is compact. So there is a compact neighborhood for the, the zero element. So that's all. Okay, so that is the meaning of local compact. All right, with this one, so we make this uh, final result about uh, topological vector spaces and finite dimensionality. You see, uh, we have already proved that a normal linear space is finite dimensional if and only if the unit sphere in it is compact. In the topological vector space situation, there is no unit sphere, there is no way, there is no concept of unit sphere because there is no metric. So the local compactness is, is an indirect way of bringing that. Okay. Once unit sphere is compact, the disk was compact. So have to telling that uh, normal space unit sphere is compact is equivalent to saying that it has a compact neighborhood. The U zero has a compact neighborhood. And that compact neighborhood makes sense. So that is the definition of local compactness here. So we have brought back, you know, avoiding the metric. The compactness uh, property can be always generalized. So it's local compactness has come in. Okay, so that is what it is. And the expected theorem here is that now every locally compact vector space is finite dimensional. 
and converse converse we have already proved if and only if converse we have already proved why because any finite dimensional vector space we have just proved that it is isomorphic to kn linearly isomorphic to kn so in particular homeomorphism therefore we know that it is locally compact okay so we have to prove that if it's locally compact then it is finite dimensional now the proof of this one maybe it's little slightly longer i am not very sure but it's much more elegant than the proof for normal spaces okay it is more or less canonical proof here so just observe that okay the if part is an easy consequence of earlier theorem that we have proved that every finite dimensional vector space a topological vector space is isomorphic to kn so well, let us prove the converse now let v be hausdorff and locally compact Okay, did I prove that Hausdorff is forward? Hausdorff, you see, and Hausdorff, locally compact and Hausdorff. Okay, Hausdorff is a must here. Okay, so locally compact and finite dimensional vector spaces are automatically Hausdorff, right? So, so I don't have to worry about that. So, so locally compact and Hausdorff. So assume that. And choose a neighborhood B such so that B bar is compact. That is local compact. So we get a finite number of vectors v1, v2, vn belonging to V such that B bar is compact, is contained inside finitely many you know, translates of half bar. Half the bar, that is an open subset of the neighborhood xi plus this one will be a neighborhood of xi xi's are taken all over v they will cover b bar but then you can choose finitely many v1 v2 vn so that i arrange the one to n vi plus half b will cover the whole thing okay so let v prime be a linear span of v1 v2 vn then V prime is a finite dimension because it's spanned by only n elements. Therefore, by 5.56 theorem, just we have proved V prime is a closed subspace of it. Here we have used Hausdorffness of V. So V prime becomes finite dimension is closed subset. This is the previous theorem, part of previous theorem. All right. Now, look at B, which is contained inside B bar, obvious, and that will be contained inside now B prime plus half B, because what is B prime? It is contained inside all this I range 1 to N, this V1, V2, Vn plus half B, but this is, each of them is contained inside V, so union is contained, sorry, V prime, so union is contained V prime. So this whole thing I can uh, replace it by one single element, V prime which is very huge actually compared to what I have written there. It's contained V prime plus half V. Right? Now we keep using the property that V prime is a vector subspace. It's a strong thing. Okay. So it follows that if you take half of B, which will contain is half of V prime plus half of half of B, right? But half of V prime is V prime itself. It's a vector space, right? So it is V prime plus half of B. So half of B is contained inside V prime plus one fourth of B. Therefore, start with B, which contains V prime plus half B, but half B is contained inside this one. So I can write V prime plus V prime plus one fourth B. But V prime plus V prime is V prime. So V prime plus one fourth B. So what has happened? B is contained inside V prime plus half B, but we have improved it to V prime plus one fourth B. You repeat this process, next time we, what we will get? It is contained V prime plus one eight B. And next time it will be one to two power 
for four times b and so on 16 and so on so this just repeated this process that's all right so what is this this is that we get b is contained in v prime plus 1 by 2 power n times b for every n that is the meaning of b is contained in the intersection of all these this is a decreasing sequence of things right so it's intersection of all these things because it's contained in everything but you remember that this forms a neighborhood system for zero this is what we have proved last time therefore this intersection is nothing but the closure of v prime but the closure of v prime what's that closure of v prime is v prime itself all right since v prime is closed we conclude that b is contained inside v prime the moment an open subset non empty open subset is contained inside a vector subspace that vector subspace must be the whole of the space okay so this follows from other lemma that we have already used namely v is contained inside powers of 2 times b union of all those things any increasing sequence of numbers will do this job okay increasing sequence you know, strictly increasing sequence or increasing converging to infinity i should say okay so that is same thing as now it's contained inside union of all 2 power n times v prime because b is contained in v prime but 2 power n times v prime is v prime itself so its union of v prime is just v prime the entire vector space is contained inside the subspace that means they are equal so what we have done we started with v we produced some finitely many elements with certain properties and then we took the linear span of that and then we showed that v is equal to v prime and anyway so what we have done is that v is finite dimensional okay under the assumption that it is hausdorff and locally compact all right so two very important theorems we have done very nice and elegant theorem the third one is again curiosity okay see you have proved that a topological vector uh, topological group is a regular space without any assumption with any further assumption so what is the best thing you can say about a topological vector space so here is one namely every topological vector space is completely regular by the way, it's very important computer regularity. We cannot, in this course, you could not see any of these important. One is about embeddability theorems because continuous functions are coming there, right? Another one is what is called the uniform, uniform uh, topologies. So this we will not be able to discuss here. So there is something important in saying that something is a completely regular and that is what is it namely every topological vector space is completely regular if we assume t1 as it will be t three and a half space okay so this is just falls short of normality if you have, would have proved the normality then you would have been even great but that is not true generally perhaps okay so I am not uh, very keen on that one. Now, let us prove this one. Okay, it takes a little more time, but let us prove that, that every topological vector space, okay, given any point and a closed subset, I must find a 
continuous function. But you don't have to do any other way point because we are working in a topological vector space. A point can always be specialized to the zero. Okay, given any neighborhood u of zero, we must find a continuous function f from entire vector space to zero one such that f of zero is zero. Okay, and f of the complement of u is singleton one. The entire complement of the open set is goes to one point. The zero goes to another point. Those two points can be chosen anything arbitrarily, but we will conveniently choose them 0 to 1 and the interval also is the domain to be also 0 1. Okay, you could have done it a comma b and so there is no problem. So this is what we have to prove. Okay. So somewhat like in the theorem of Urizon, we have to work, but it is, uh, it is easier than that for us here. Start with u naught equal to u. Inductively, we are going to find a sequence of open subsets. Okay. <clears throat> now we are using topological vector space condition here. So it is easier than doing it in an arbitrary normal space. Inductively, choose symmetric open neighborhoods u n of 0 such that u n plus u n is contained inside u n minus 1. Remember symmetric means u n inverse is u n but here inverse is minus u n. If I could have put here minus also then that also it should be same thing. Okay, u n plus u n or u n minus u n is same thing because u n is symmetric. Symmetric here with respect to the addition. Okay, so u n plus u n is contained inside u n minus 1 for every n. So what do I do? Start with u naught. Take a u 1 which has this property. u 1 plus u 1 is contained inside u naught and keep doing that. Okay, now let d denote the set of all dyadic rationals including 0 to 1 over 1. What are dyadic rationals? Each R inside D as a unique representation, R ring from 0 to infinity, CIR 2 power R. Okay. 1 by 2, 1 by 2 plus 1 by uh, 1 by 4, or just 1 by 4, and so on. Okay. So you can take a, a, any anything like that. So it's a unique representation here, okay, where all these CIR, the denominators are either 0 or 1, okay, and only finitely many CIFR are non-zero. So this is my definition of this dyadic rational. I have given you complete uh, description of this. What are these things? Put a r equal to, okay, v if r is greater than or equal to 1, okay, so this r, I do not know what it is, it is not rational, r if greater than or equal to 1, I put a r and if r is inside d, 0 to 1 open, okay, that is inside d, then put a r equal to, this. look at these numbers here, 0 and 1. They are the scalars, right? So I can put C i of r times u i. This makes sense because we are working in a topological vector space. The u i s are subsets of v capital V. So zero times u i means just the zero. That is a zero vector. C i r times C i is in C i r is one. It is just u i. Okay. Then you are taking the sum of all these. Okay. So, what I should mention is here, you can take these things as only just finite sum. Only finitely many CIRs are non-zero. I have put infinity here as if convergent sequence and so on. But the adic rationals are only finitely many CIs are zero, non-zero. Okay, I don't want to stop here and so on. Then n could be infinity. So, this is just 0 to n and then n is going to infinity. All of them are there. That's a one. 
So, three i's are non-zero. So, most of them are zero here. So, this is a finite sum. Okay. I didn't want to. Something u1, maybe u3, maybe u5 and so on. So, these are, this is a finite sum. But this makes sense. The ui's are open and each of them will be open subsets. All right. We first make a few observations on the subsets AR. Each AR is a open neighborhood of zero and AR is contained inside U naught, contained inside equal to U. That's by definition. See, U1 plus U1 is contained inside, right? U1 plus U naught is also contained inside U1 because U naught is already contained and so on. So, AR is contained inside U naught. This is important. If R is less than S, okay, inside D, then AR will be contained inside AS. Okay. So, these are similar to what you have done when improving Rizons lemma. Somewhat similar, but easier steps here. Okay. So, how I this is true? But choose the smallest K such that C, uh, CK of R is 0. Once you R, there are one C1, C2, CKs, right? To the smallest CK, so CK of R is 0 and CK of S is 1. Among the R and S, you keep compa comparing. Okay. So, some zeros we may get. So, first time this means S and the, these things are 0. That's what I have to say. Then, AR will be contained in say, A 1 by 2 power K. Once 1 by 2 A or 1 by 2 power K, A S will be even, even bigger than that. The more elements will be there. That means this has U K already and then some plus, plus something so on. So that will be contained in A S. Okay. A S will have U K plus plus something more. So that is why it is contained in that. Okay. Recall that if A and B are symmetric neighborhoods of 0, then A bar union B bar is contained A union B, A, A, A plus B, right? So this is what we have seen uh, for, for uh, uh, topological groups itself, okay? Given R less than S, choose N such that 1 by 2 power n is less than s minus r, which is some positive number. So r is less than s, s minus r will be some positive number. So choose n sufficiently large. Then ar bar will be contained inside ar plus u of 1 by 2 power n. Okay. See, u of uh, this notation, what are u naught, u1 and so on, I, I could have just put a suffix here, but I have put a bracket here, doesn't matter, u power 1 by 2 power n, contained inside a s, because of this property, the 1 by 2 power n is less than s minus r, what you are adding here is less than s, all right, so a, b, c we have proved, Now, let us define fx equal to infimum of r for all x belonging to a r. You see, if you have dadic rational, then you have to choose it to be smaller than that. You see, infimum of those things. But if there are no dadic rationals, then remember, this will be the whole of a when this will be r equal to 1. Okay. So there were points of vr there like that. Alright. So fx will be 1. By a it follows that f of v minus u is 1 because the moment it is outside u, you have defined it to be r to be 1. So the infimum in of this will be 1. So this is by definition. Also, since u0 is inside un and un is a of 1 by 2 power n, 
okay if you just take ar what is ar just call recall all these properties i have told but what is ar <coughs> ar is the sum of all these but when r equal to 1 by 2 power n there is only only one element there right so that will be u uh, un or u whatever notation uh, that is the notation u n comes so u n is a 1 by 2 power n for all n this is case therefore if 1 by 2 power n is there for all n in minimum will be zero so f0 is zero it remains to prove that why f is continuous we have proved that f0 is zero f of p minus u is one that is fine continuity of f is what we have to do so there is full analogy between Euridon's lemma and this one. If you had not understood Euridon's lemma, you won't have been able to prove this one. Okay, I don't claim that if you have understood Euridon's lemma, you would be able to prove this one. But but now you have adopted those ideas in the case of topological vector spaces. So why f is continuous? Okay, ready. Start with any point x in V and put fx equal to t and epsilon positive. Okay. Choose R and S belonging to D such that T minus epsilon is less than R, less than S, less than T. The fx equal to t. What is what is uh, the definition? It's infimum of some set. Okay, so therefore, you will have R and S inside the radic rational such that T minus epsilon, so T, T minus epsilon is less than F, right? It's less than R, less than S, less than T. So between R and T, T is larger, T, S is smaller. Okay, so you can choose one some R here and then smaller than that one t minus between t minus epsilon and t plus epsilon you can choose two numbers because this is all uh, dense subset of 0 comma 1 that's all i'm using here that's nothing more than that okay so then a r bar will be contained inside a s and x is not inside a s Okay, because fx is t, which is smaller than, is bigger than t. So this, this, this cannot be inside a s. If it's inside a s, the, the value of this one would be smaller than that. So this means that if you take w, you could v minus a r bar. Okay, a r bar is closed. So v minus a r bar. It's an open neighborhood of x. Okay. So this implies that f of w is contained in R to 1. So the least thing is a r. It cannot be anything lower than that is not there. So it has to be bigger than r. So it's r to 1. It cannot be uh, bigger than 1 anyway. All of them are uh, less than equal to 1 only. Okay. So FW is going to be R to 1. Okay. This already completes the proof of continuity. In the case T equal to 1, we have formed a neighborhood. If T were, I don't say T is equal to 1. Start with Fx, start with X, Fx, put Fx equal to T. That's all. Okay. It may happen that this T is 1, then this argument says that already that the continuity of uh, uh, the, uh, the function f at point x as f x equal to 1 is proved. Okay, that is a special case. All right. Now you assume t is less than 1. So we are inside now dadic rational. Okay. Choose p belong to d such that 
ടി ലെസ് ദൻ പി ലെസ് ദൻ ടി പ്ലസ് എഫ്സായല ഈവൻ എനി എഫ്സായല ഐ മീൻ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് എ നേബർഹുഡ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് ഐ ഹാവ് ടു ഡോ ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഫോളോസ് ദാറ്റ് എക്സ് ഈസ് ഇൻസൈഡ് എ പി ബിക്കോസ് ടി ഈസ് ഇവൻ സ്മോളർ എഫ് ഓഫ് എക്സ് ഇസ് സ്മോളർ സോ ഇറ്റ് മസ്റ്റ് ബി ഇൻസൈഡ് എ പി റൈറ്റ് നൗ എഫ് ഓഫ് എ പി പോയിന്റ്സ് ഇൻസൈഡ് എ പി okay they must be between 0 and p once it's already p it may be even smaller so but it may be 0 and p that's what it is so it follows that the same w okay the same thing here intersection ap is a neighborhood of x such that f of w intersection ap will be contained inside now t minus epsilon to t plus epsilon once t is smaller than epsilon 1 you may assume that this epsilon is smaller than uh 1 minus t so that uh, even after adding t it doesn't go out of that one for such epsilon it proves is fine otherwise anyway it can go out but it is inside t minus of t plus epsilon is what you have show for every t such that you know there is some epsilon is what this what you have to show there is some neighborhood f of this w intersection ap will give you a neighborhood remember all these aps are open subsets okay so that completes the plan what whatever i have done to this part 1 course i just repeat what were the reference books here i was completely influenced as a student and even today by the book of simans george simans and in spirit be not be in content i have followed this book for example the definition of t not space uh, t1 space normal space and so on normal and t3 t4 and so on those things differ from the simmons book so be cautious about that i have already told you earlier so be cautious about that this t and c back this book i have referred to counter examples in topology this book is now available online and uh, whatever i had seen it has expanded much so <laughs> since 40 years back okay it has expanded much so so this is good for not learning topology but as a reference book it is nice that's what i have shown so my second book in topology we may say is kelly's book which is a very fantastic book but difficult to read as compared to simon simon was a pleasant man but i enjoyed kelly's book also later when i joined uh, iit bombay my colleague had written a nice book and kd joshi now that's introduction to topology so i have borrowed a material from this book also so i have high regard for this book but it's okay so in fact the the existence of this book stopped me writing a book on my own on points of topology all right 
before that even in tifr this was my third book in topology hurwitz and walman dimension theory this is a very specialized book but it teaches you topology like anything so this is wonderful book okay this is specialized book in dimension theory and then there are nice books which i have just browsed through i have not studied them and so on armstrong this uh, book by uh, c wayne patty okay so here you can see rudin's function analysis this i have used for this topological vector spaces and so on okay so that's what it is so you can also look into so there are some papers here from which i have borrowed material all these books they are good book dugunji and uh, what are the other ones here well that's it Satish Hirali's nice book on metric spaces. Okay, so that's what it is. So, however, I want to tell you, I remind you that uh, I am going to give uh, uh, notes, and you have already the notes with you. So, just to uh, get through this. this proof this whole course you don't need anything else so you just go through the notes properly work out and assignments you are done okay so yeah so that's all i wanted to tell you about this <clears throat> so finally i would like to end up this one with a lot of thanks to the nptl team my own uh, team of tutors whose help has been extremely useful extremely great help moral support and so on in in bringing out this course to you and also big thanks to all of you if you have stayed with me so far i hope i will see you in the second part also okay thank you